Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the previous video, we talked about Actinomyces israeli. Today, we'll talk about lactobacilli. These are gram-positive rods. They are anaerobic and non-spore forming. They are part of the normal flora of your mouth, gastrointestinal tract, and genitourinary tract. But lucky for you, lactobacilli cannot grow and multiply in the urine, and that's why they rarely cause urinary tract infections, unlike E. coli, for instance. Now let's get started. For maximum understanding, please watch the videos in this playlist in order. I have two microbiology playlists on my channel. One is called Microbiology, the other is called Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, which you're watching right now. The gram-positive rods, especially the non-spore forming, can be divided into aerobic and anaerobic. The aerobics are the motile listeria and the immotile corine bacteria and nocardia versus the anaerobic non-spore forming gram-positive rods, which are four famous ones, Actinomyces israeli, Lactobacilli, which is today's topic, Mobilancus, and Propioni bacterium, which causes acne. So again, these four are anaerobic, non-spore forming, gram-positive rods, and we're talking about Lactobacilli. Hey, Medicosis, why do we call them Lactobacilli? Because they are bacilli that can make lactic acid. It makes sense. Lactobacilli, gram-positive rods, non-spore forming, anaerobic. They could be strictly anaerobic or facultative anaerobic bacteria. They are part of the normal flora that colonize your oral cavity, your gastrointestinal tract, and your genitourinary tract. Since they are in the oral cavity, go to the dentist, have some dental work, especially if it's invasive, and before you know it, if you had a weak valve before and you're hot, you can suffer from subacute bacterial endocarditis. Let me tell you a true story that happened because of a doofus dentist. A lady in her 60s went for some dental work. The patient asked the dentist, after the dental work, do you think I should take antibiotics? To which the frustrated mediocrity replied, No, we used to do this in the past, but now we are sophisticated. We've learned about antibiotics resistant, so we stopped giving them except in rare circumstances. Yet the dork forgot to ask about her cardiac history. Indeed, she did have history of rheumatic fever mitral valve prolapse and mitral regurgitation. Add to this, she had atrial fibrillation. So she was not given antibiotics. Four weeks later, she shows up to the emergency department. She was tachycardic, tachypnic, and with a systolic murmur. What do you do when you suspect bacterial endocarditis? You order three cultures of the blood to make sure that what you found is not just normal flora, not just transient bacteremia, but the causative organism behind the endocarditis. And sure, they found lactobacilli in her blood. Most cases of subacute bacterial endocarditis are treated with a combination of penicillin and gentamicin. Never ever forget this. If you have been watching my videos, you know that whenever a bacteria causes endocarditis, the treatment is usually penicillin plus gentamicin. And thank goodness the lady made a complete recovery. So the moral of the story is, most doctors are doofuses and dentists are no exception, even though they are not real doctors. Teaching students provide me with meaning in my life. Making fun of dentists provide me with joy. Joy plus meaning equals happiness. Next, since lactobacilli colonize the genitourinary tract, after labor and delivery or any obstetrics or gynecological procedure, we can introduce the lactobacilli into the blood of the patient causing transient bacteremia. If the patient is immunocompromised, worse, septicemia. Lactobacilli are ubiquitous in urine samples and blood culture. But just because you saw lactobacilli in the urine sample doesn't necessarily mean that the lactobacillus was the cause of the urinary tract infection. In fact, they rarely do cause UTIs. 
Why not? Because they cannot grow and multiply in the urine. How can we diagnose it? Just gram stain microscopy and don't forget the culture. In cases of endocarditis, you should order three separate blood cultures. What's the treatment? Penicillin and gentamide or any other aminoglycoside. Now there is something that we did not expect. Do you remember vancomycin? Oh, I remember vancomycin. It has excellent coverage for gram-positive bacteria. All right, here's a gram-positive bacteria that is naturally resistant to vancomycin, i.e. vancomycin is not going to work against lactobacilli. Just like the fact that enterococci are naturally resistant to cephalosporins. If you want to learn more about penicillin, vancomycin, cephalosporins, aminoglycosides, download my antibiotics course on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. Not only will it teach you about antibacterials, but also antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic medications. I also have a neuropharmacology course on my website. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.